This is how you install a resin bound pathway. Tamper your surfaces down using a wacker plate. Empty your stone into the mixing drum and then apply your sand. Pour your two parts resin into one bucket and then add your catalyst. Mix this well. Pour it into the mixer so it can bind with the stones. Once it's mixed for a couple of minutes, then it can slowly be poured out into your wheelbarrow. Then you want to start at your furthest point away, tipping it up into small manageable piles. Then using a flat rake, start to spread it out evenly as possible, about 30 to 40 millimeters thick. Then press it down with your trial, smoothing it off from left to right. And then continue doing the same process. Pour, level, and flatten with your trowel. Check out the full step-by-step -step video on our Mr. and Mrs. DIY YouTube channel. I'm gonna show you how to install acoustic wall paneling on a flat wall like this. Start by measuring your wall and finding the center point. Place a board in position, check its level, and put a mark there. Then you can drill some clearance holes through the board to mark your wall. And check there's no pipes or wires behind there. Before you start drilling with a masonry drill bit, then apply your red plugs, tap these flush with your hammer and drive the screws through the felt, holding the board into position. Once you come to the end, you might need to trim one down to size and mark up if there's any sockets or plugs that need cutting out. Once these are marked, drill all four corners, cut away the felt from the back and using a jigsaw, trim out the slats. Place it into position. If it fits, screw it into place and do the same on the opposite side. For the full video, head over to wallsandfloors.co.uk. I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint your metal radiators. Mix up some French Chic Sugar Soap with some warm water and start to scrub the surface of your item, making sure you clear away all the grease and grime. Then wipe this off with a damp cloth. Once you've dried it, you can give it a gentle sanding down. And if you come across any rust spots, give these a good sanding off, then mask the areas where you don't require any paint. Now you're ready to apply your paint. I'm using French Cheeks Trim Paint and the color is Cool Beans. It's part of the Samaritans range. If you're applying it on with the brush, start at one end and work your way up and down, following the contours of the radiator. Then feather over it gently, just to make sure you're spreading it evenly and avoiding any drips. And of course, you can always apply the paint using a radiator roller, but it still needs to be feathered off with a paintbrush. French Cheeks Trim Paint also works amazingly well if you're applying it with a paint sprayer. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to seal around your window frames when it meets the brickwork. Make sure the areas you're gonna apply the sealant to is clean and dust free. Apply a strip of masking tape along the edge of the frame, about five millimeters in, and also along the edge of the brickwork to get a neater line of silicone. Cut the nozzle at a 45 degree angle, place it in between the masking tape strips and start to pull the handle on your silicone gun. Once the adhesive force sealant starts to come out, move it down at a continuous pace. Then take a silicone wipe, make sure your fingers are nice and clean, and you can start to smooth off the sealant. Now you don't wait for this to dry. As soon as you've smoothed it, you can start to move the masking tape off. You're looking for more 60 second tips? Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this 60 second tip, I'm gonna show you how to paint terracotta pots so they last. You do need to give it a really good scrub down with the concentrated sugar soap beforehand. So I'm gonna start my preparation by sealing my pot with French Cheeks finishing coat. This is touch dry within 15 to 30 minutes, so once it is, you can start on your second coat. Once your second coat is dry, for best results, you can even apply a third coat. And then you're ready to start painting. The colours I've chosen are Dive In and Raspberry Punch from French Chic's limited edition Alfresco range. Millions of people across social media are hashtagging best paint in the world. Whenever Craig and I use it, it's always easy to see why. Now that my first coat is complete, I'm going to leave it to dry for a couple of hours before I come back and start my second coat.
For more 60 second tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. Here's how you build and fit a stud wall. Measure up the area where you want to create a stud work frame. I'm using 3x2 sawn timber, cut these down to size using a chop saw. It makes it quick and easy, then you're ready to fix the corners. Start by drilling the pilot hole and drive in 100mm screws to hold it firmly into position. Offer the frame into position, check that it's level and square, then you can fix it down to the floor and the adjacent wall. And install some uprights, keeping these about 600mm apart. Make sure they're level and screw them in from top to bottom. Cut down and place in some noggins. Screw these in either side of the uprights to stabilise the stud wall. Then you can continue with another row of noggins towards the top and the bottom to help secure the wall. Now I was governed by the length of my timbers being 2.4 metres in length, so I'm going to have to build a second frame in the same method, fixing all four sides in securely. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. I'm going to show you how you fix acoustic wall panel boards to a stud wall like this. Apply a good heavy line of adhesive, covering all the stud work where it's going to come into contact with the back of the board. Once you've done that, place the board into position. Start by gently pressing it at the bottom, same again in the middle and at the top. You'll start to feel the adhesive grab the board and hold it into position. Then you can move on to your second one. Again, covering the area of the stud, place the board in position and interlock the groove. Once you've got your second board into position, you can then apply a couple of screws top and bottom, holding it still until the adhesive is dry. Then you can continue to fit the rest of the boards in the same method, covering the stud work with the adhesive, interlocking the boards into place. So you may find you'll need a cut. Get a sharp trimming knife, mark your size, and cut it through the foam. Then fix it into position, just like the rest. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've got a quick time and money saving tip for you when it comes to plumbing. And it's all about fitting isolating valves. So what are they and what are they for? Well, I'm about to fit a new bath here with taps on. And if we look down here, this is the hot and cold feed and the waste. There's no isolating valves on here. So for me to be able to disconnect these, I've got to turn the stop tap off, which isolates the whole water to the house so no bathrooms work, no kitchen water works. The hot tap, if you've got a header tank or a boiler in there with no gate valve on, you've got to drain that whole system. It's timely and it's costly. But if you're at this position and you're changing these and it's already been drained out, these are what you must fit. Really quick and easy to do and they only cost a couple of pounds as well. You'll see it's got a little arrow pointing that way so that wants the water to travel through it this way. It's also got a little screw head there where it's pointing that way so the water travels through. When you turn it that way, it isolates it and turns it off. So if we look down here, you can see it's open, now it's closed. It's open and closed. So fitting them is simple. Undo them. Inside each nut, a little copper olive on there and same again on the other side. So we'll take the both of these out for now. There it is here. Where our pipe is, make sure that that's clean, give it a little sand down if it needs it. Slide on the nut. Then we put the olive on, slide that inside the nut. Then take the valve itself, just double check that the arrow is pointing this way. Push that on and then start to tighten that up the best you can with your fingers to start with on the thread. Just holding this quite steady. That's as far as I can go now. And then your next pipe, whether it's coming up or going across there, I'll just do it that way for now so we can see it. We will slide on the nut again there. Put the olive on, that will go into here. And the same again. So the next stage, we want to hold that center valve there and then start to tighten each one of these and see me in there as tight as you can now that way you can let go of this they've both been wound on the thread nice and tight and them olives underneath have expanded and created that a nice waterproof seal but always remember where that 
little valve is, making sure you can, of course, get your screwdriver in it and turn it on and off. You don't want to have that right underneath where you can't get your screwdriver at it. And you can turn it on and your water's gonna run through. Turn it off to close it. So if you're looking for more bathroom tips, tap the playlist link above and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a strong base for your garden shed that's portable. Take the measurements from the base of your shed. Cut down some 3x2 tantalized timber. Mark up where they're gonna be fixed. Drill some pilot holes. Apply some multi-use glue on the edges of the cut timber. Drive two large four inch screws through the outside timber into each strut. Depending on how big your shed is, you want to have a strut about every 450 millimetres apart. I'm going to apply two more pieces of 3B2 timber either side to add to the strength and to hold the four corner wheels in place. I'm adding two further noggins on the inside which will also support the wheels. I'm using six wheels, one at all four corners and two in the centre. So I'm going to drill a pallet hole first, place a washer on the end and drive that in with your screwdriver. I'll turn this over and place the shed base onto the top. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. This is how you build a flat pack garden shed. I'm starting with the back. It's always wise to have somebody to hold it for you. Into the base first, then lift up the side panel, holding it square and level at the corner, driving some screws in to hold the side panel into position. Then screw the bottom of the side panel into the base. You do the same with the opposite side panel and then you're ready to place the front section in position. Double check that it's level and then screw that into the two side sections and the base. When driving the screws in, it's always wise to drill a pallet hole first. It's easier to drive your screws in. Now the four sides are fixed into position, we're going to place the roof panels on. Before I do this, I'm running the line of multi-use adhesive all the way along the front and back and centre edges. I'm going to place the panel into position and screw this down. The glue is going to add to the overall structural strength. So that's the main structure now complete. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. Hi, I'm Cray Phillips. Here's three ways to paint your garden shed. Give it a good sanding across all the wood. I'm going to be using French Cheek Swanky Pants from the Alfresco range. And I'm painting all the corners first with a heavy paintbrush. These are going to be covered later with a trim, but it will make it last longer. Then I used a small radiator roller to paint the front sections of the panels. This is a little bit quicker than the brush. If you do use a paint sprayer, you will have to dilute your paint down. But they're quick and easy to use. This is the consistency you're looking for. Test it on a small piece of cardboard first. Once you're happy, then you can start to paint the whole panel of the shed. I start from going left to right, let this dry for two hours, then apply a second coat. Then you can turn the nozzle and spray up and down. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm Craig Phillips and I'm adding the finishing touches to my garden shed. Once the paint was dry, I did a couple of coats on the main doors. The color I'm using is City Slicker. Likewise with the trim, I painted all four sides of this for better protection. These are going to be placed on the corners. Screw the hinges onto the door, offer it up into position and screw it in tight to the frame. Double check that it swings okay. Apply some good quality multi-use on the trims, offer these up to the corner and screw them into position. I applied the glue across the roof panels, rolled out the felt, pinned down the corners and covered them with the trim. Again, glued further trims on the underside of the roof, clamped these into position till it dried. So that's how you build your flat pack shed. Prepare all the surfaces and paint it so it lasts. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. When we first built our house, I constructed a metal frame hanging for a fireplace. However, further down the line, I decided I wanted a different type of fireplace. So I had to cut the bottom of it off and restructure the metalwork as well as the woodwork frame around it. Because as you can see, I wanted to sit in a bespoke three-sided panoramic glazed fire. Now that's seen from our dining area. 
However, the back of it, I put a single glazed bespoke fire in there for our living room. Then I created these recesses in the side, which is gonna have a decorative feature you'll see in a moment. And then the front and the back, I left a big opening in there to create a media wall, which our TV fits in both sides. For more inspiration, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. As you can see, I fitted chipboard around the frame and a TV bracket. Then I cladded this with some plasterboard, putting trims along the edges, getting it ready for plastering. Skimmed the front, the back, and the sides. Once it had dried, I mashed up around my TV and my glazed panoramic fire. Got out my Wagner paint sprayer and started painting it. Now, if you're wondering what color I chose, I can't give you that answer because I mixed about four different Frenchy colors up. Now, in the first part, I mentioned about a decorative feature. Well, as you can see, these are off-cut pieces of logs that I bedded into place using my Max Bond. Once you've laid out your logs, gems, and crystals, you've got thousands of different settings to create the right look and feel that you desire. And I'm sure you agree, a beautiful hanging fireplace is the focal point to every living room. For more inspiration, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set out and install, you know, mosaic Victorian style floor tiles. It's very important that you do a dry run of these. Start off by mixing your floor adhesive in a bucket, some clean cold water, use an electric drill and a paddle. This way you'll get a nice smooth consistency that looks like this. Start to spread that out with the flat edge of the trowel, then comb that through with the notched edge. I'm using a six millimeter notched edge trowel. Start to lay out the borders, straighten them up as you go with the straight edge. Once they're in place, start to lay the internal tiles, gently pressing them down as you go, only committing to one row at a time. So I'm just setting my last corner tile now on here and using my damp sponge again, wiping off any excess adhesive that's on there. That's all the tiles now fitted and fixed into position for my hallway. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I built this area a couple of years ago to keep Nelly safe. It was when she was about seven months old and she was just sitting up and starting to crawl around and we put some foam down on the floor to keep her safe because we got porcelain tiles right the way throughout our whole area and it's not that child friendly. Also, I wanted to keep Sydney the bulldog out because she would come in and keep licking Nelly's face. So, this served a great purpose. All it was was some spindles. I cut them down in half. I put a handrail along the top and along the bottom. I mitered the corners fixed them together and then I spray painted it ballerina pink which is part of the French Heath range. It looked fantastic. We probably kept it up for about four or five months until Nelly was kind of big enough to start trying to climb over it. However, Lennon is now seven and a half months old and we're in the same position. We need to contain him in, in here, let him learn around to crawl and sit upright. We're going to put some new foam down here on the floor and we've spray painted this with the Greyhound Grey, another one of French Cheek products. It looks beautiful, I've let it dry, and then I've just glued my two corners together. They were mitered at a 45 degree angle. I applied three C's Max Bond on all corners, held them together, then wrapped some masking tape around them to secure it in place until the Max Bond had dried. I'll take this off tomorrow, and this will look fantastic, be nice and stable, and hopefully keep Lennon nice and safe. Hi, I'm Cray Phillips. This is how you build a brick barbecue. Start by mixing your mortar, four sand, one cement, add a bit of dye. Set it out on the floor. You're gonna need a solid base to work off. Lay the first course of your four tier engineering bricks, checking that it's square and level. Continue your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh course. Every three or four courses, make sure you point the brickwork before it dries. Give it a quick brush off. When you get to the eighth course, this is where you're going to step out with your brickwork to hold the barbecue. You do the same on the tenth course, this will hold the grill. And again on the twelfth course. When you've got to the desired height, 
spread some cement over the top, smooth this off, and give it a quick rub down with a sponge. And it's complete. You're looking for more 60 second tips? Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. Oh, that's hot. I'm going to show you how to mark up, cut out the holes, and install your bath taps. Start by protecting the surfaces. I'm applying some masking tape all the way across the top. Then I'm measuring and marking in this very center. So we need to measure the center between the two pipes. Then transfer these marks onto your masking tape. Start off by drilling a five millimeter hole through your marks. Then you're gonna need a hole cutter suitable for the widths of your pipes. Then start to core out the hole. Once you've done one, place the tap through the hole just to double check that your other mark is in the correct position and then you can repeat the same process. You can remove the bolts and washers from the pipes off your tap. Start to remove your masking tape, give it a quick sanding down where the sharp edges have been cut. Place your taps through the hole, then start to hand tighten the bolts up the thread by hand. Then you can tighten these up using a monoblock spanner. Now you're ready to place your bath into position and plumb your hot and cold feed. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a bracket to masonry brickwork. Place the bracket to the wall where you require it fixing. Mark with a pencil, then get yourself a masonry drill bit with the SDS drill or the hammer action drill and drill the holes deep enough ready for your plugs. Now I'm using a plastic raw plug. Push this in so it's flush with the brick. Make sure the diameter of the plug is the same size as the drill bit you've used. Slide the bracket into position, lining the holes up. Start the screws off by hand first, and then get your cordless screwdriver and finish them off. This will hold the bracket securely into position. I've got a couple more brackets to do to complete my clothes rail made out of copper pipe. That's how easy it is to drill, plug and screw brackets to a masonry wall. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment. In this video, I'm going to show you how to refit and seal this bath panel. Use a silicone wipe to clean off the bath panel. Take a trimmer knife and cut the top of the tube open. Then screw on the nozzle. Trim the end at an angle and then you're ready to use. Now I'm going to put two lines here. One right on the underside edge of the bath. And then I'm going to put another good thick line across the actual batten itself. Because the back of the panel will push up against this nice and tight. And the top edge of it will hook on top of that batten. Firmly press the panel against the wooden batten with the sealant on to make sure it grabs. You may need to use some plastic window packers to hold the panel into position until the sealant cures. Using your silicone wipes, clean off the excessive sealant before it dries. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. I'm going to show you how to clean outdoor patio slabs or tiles. Start by clearing off all the loose debris, dust and dirt off the top of the surface using a yard brush. I'm using Black Spot and Algae Remover from Tile Mountain. I'm pouring this into a plastic watering can. There's five litres in the tub and then spread it as even as you can across the surface. Now this would normally take about two hours to penetrate in and start to work. Now normally you'd leave this on for about two to four hours to penetrate in and then the work would start. I started to spread it around as even as possible using the yard brush, not quite scrubbing it, but just making sure that I'm covering the entire area. But within 15 minutes, the heavens opened and the rain started pouring down, so we had no option but to wash it off. And look at the result in just 30 minutes. If you're looking for more how-to videos, like and subscribe. I'm going to show you how to prepare, seal and paint this beautiful bespoke standing shelving unit. I started off by sanding all my cut edges, then sanded over the areas that had filler in covering the screws. I applied a layer of French Cheeks finishing coat across all the cut edges using my paintbrush. 
Then I applied it along the sides with a radiator roller to seal the filler. Once this had dried, I give it a gentle sanding down and applied a second coat of sealant across the whole unit. As for the painting, I used Frenchique's chalk paint, applied this on with a radiator roller and then feathered it off with my brush. I applied the paint on all the cut edges with the paintbrush. Once this is dry, I applied a second coat using the same methods, a small radiator roller and Frenchie's paintbrushes. So if you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to solder joints so you can connect copper pipes. First, cut your pipes down to size using a pipe cutter. Now, before you try to solder any copper pipe, make sure it's cleaned off with some emery paper or wire wool. Then slide your joint on, fit the other pipe in between, and then you can start to apply the heat. Now, I'm using the Wagner Inferno. This normally only takes a couple of minutes. Now the joint that I'm using already has the solder within it. I find these easier to use. There are of course other joints on the market. Now these joints that I'm soldering aren't to hold any water in. I'm just creating a closed rail out of copper piping for my coats. So that's how easy it is to cut, piece together and solder your pipe work. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a comment too. I'm going to show you how to install this electric towel rail. Start with a screwdriver to remove the four plastic bungs from each corner. Apply some PTF tape on the thread around the blanking plugs and then slowly tighten these up by hand. Mix your inhibitor with clean water and then pour this through a funnel into the radiator. Measure up for your brackets, fix these onto the back of the radiator. It's important to check behind the tiles with the detector to see that there are no pipes or wires there before you start drilling holes. Once you've drilled your holes in the correct position, apply your plug and screw the brackets firmly to the wall. Mount the radiator into position. Using a screwdriver, tighten up the screws on the back of the brackets. Once the radiator's hung, get your electrician to wire the thermostat up to the fuse. If you're looking for more top trade tips, don't forget to like, subscribe and follow. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix down artificial grass on your flat roof. There's a number of benefits of fitting artificial grass over a flat roof. To start with, aesthetically it looks so much better. It'll help with the insulation value as well as adding extra soundproofing. Our roof is a fiberglass GRP system. Many standard roofs are felt, so you're going to need to use a professional adhesive, just like 3C's Max Bond. Apply a heavy line of glue across the front, back and sides of your roof area as well as internal lines at least a meter apart. Roll your artificial grass over the glue, using a soft brush to iron out any creases, trying to get it as flat as possible. You can also use the inner tube roll, which will help flatten the surface. The artificial grass is weatherproof, permeable, and it drains efficiently. So if it's fitted correctly, it'll last for years. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint your spindles, handrail and newel post. When painting any item, preparation is really important. First, sand down all the surfaces the best you can. If you're using a paint sprayer, you will need to mask up around the areas that you don't want any paint going on. If you happen to have holes, you will need to fill these with some filler, let that dry and then sand it down and it's ready to paint over. When applying it on with a brush, you may see some brush strokes, but don't worry, they'll flatten out with French heat paint. If using a paint sprayer, you will need to dilute the paint down by about 10%. Test this on a piece of cardboard first, then you're ready to paint. Hold the nozzle about four inches away from the surface and continuously move it up and down. Once you've applied your first coat, leave this to dry for four to six hours, and then you can apply a second coat. And of course, you always give it a very light sanding down between coats. For more 60 second tips, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint unpainted decking planks. On newly laid boards, first you're going to need to fill the screw holes. I applied some flexible outdoor paintable filler. Then before it dried, wiped it smooth. 
Once it was dried, give it a little tickle over with the sandpaper. With the first layer of paint, I diluted it down by 5%. This allows the paint to penetrate deeply into the wood. Then leave it for four hours before applying your second coat, but you may have to give it a gentle sanding as the wood might feel a little bit coarse after the first coat. Don't forget to take your shoes off if you have to walk on the decking for the first three weeks until the paint is completely cured. And that's your decking now complete. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm gonna show you how to achieve an awkward cut from a floor tile around a door frame and an architrave. Start by placing your tile on, draw around it with the pen, cut it out with your scissors, Place the cardboard on top of the existing tile, checking that it's square. Then offer the tile up against the wall. And start to scribe and measure the shape around the architrave itself. Transfer this onto the cardboard, cut it out, check that it fits. If you're happy with that, mark that up onto your tile and start to cut using a four inch angle grinder and a diamond tip blade. If you've not used one of these before, we've got a full step-by-step -step video on how they're used on our YouTube channel. Now the cut is complete, check that it fits, spread down your tile adhesive and lay your tile. Once it's dry, grout your tiles, then you can use silicone sealant around the cut edge against the architrave. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. Here's how to install a sliding shower enclosure in 60 seconds. Check your instructions and start to fix the frame together. Then fit the rubber strips at both ends, Check that there's no wires behind the walls before you start drilling them. Fix the rails to each side and then start to put the frame in place. Check that it's level and then drill and commit for the next rail. These are attached to the wall. Once they're in place, you can fit the side panels. These can be squeezed together by hand to get them level. Then double check again with the spirit level. The opening side has a side panel that needs to be put into position and then screwed top and bottom. Then you can hang the door. This is on casters and will slide from left to right. Once you're happy that that's moving okay, you can then apply the handle. Seal around the outside with a clear silicone. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. I'm going to show you how to apply plasterboard to a stud wall as well as a stud wall that's boarded with MDF. I'm going to show you how to make a stud wall for a partition. So I'm at home doing some home improvements and behind me here is our carport. That's never been used as a carport. So I'm closing it off so we can use it as storage space behind it. I've built a wooden frame there. That's going to be getting insulated. Put a set of aluminium French doors in here. 
and then I'm cladding the outside of it with nice hard wood. However, when we've come along there and bridged across the top, this section that comes down here, we're going to be able to see the actual groove in this. So this groove needs to be filled and sanded down. So I'm going to use 3C's two-in-one wood repair. It's really quick and easy to use. It's a one-part application straight out of the tube. Mix it up with a scraper on a piece of plastic, and then you can start to apply it in the areas you want to fill. This groove I've got on the TNG is probably about 12 millimeters deep and six millimeters wide. So make sure you fill all of the cavity between it, leaving no air bubbles. I left it till the next day to dry and then sanded it down using a handheld orbital sander. So now it's nice and smooth, I'll fit this to the rest of the frame around the door. And then to finish it off with some trims top and bottom, so it blends in with the rest of our house and gives it a long lasting finish. I also did the same on the inside. After the stud work was insulated, it was boarded and then cladded over with a soft wood tongue and groove. So now the carport is safely closed off, I can store my workwear clothes in here. You may have seen one of our other videos where I lost my walk-in wardrobe because Lennon gained his nursery. For more DIY tips, head over to our website. The link's in the description below. I'm going to show you how to prepare and apply SureSet Pour On Gravel Resin Binder. You may be creating your own new stone pathway or have an existing one. Either way, you're going to need to wash your stone, making sure it's cleared of dust and debris. Then leave it to dry and compact it down flat. Then you can mask around the edge to protect the surrounding surfaces. Give your stone a final compact down with a trowel and now you're ready to start applying the resin using an applicator bar like this one. This allows you to apply the pour on gravel binder evenly across the whole surface. One final compact down using a trowel, then you can leave it for 24 hours before applying a second coat. Using the same method as you previously did to apply the first coat. Now you can remove the masking tape and it's complete. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. Now, three days ago, this stone pathway was loose stone, just spread around. You could pick it up, you could kick it, and it went everywhere. However, I applied two layers of Shoreset Pour On Resin over the top of it to firm it up. It still looks wet, but it's not. That's just the resin giving it a nice kind of glittering color to it, and it's also drawing out the natural color of the stone which makes it look beautiful but what i'm going to do is a water test with this 10 liter bucket of water here i want to pour it on and see if and how long it takes to disperse through all of these stones here we go 10 liters Woo. four five not even five seconds i can hear it bubbling away in there as it's dispersing through all of the stones, but I can't see any of it. Obviously, it's a little bit wet to touch on the top, but that has now just kind of showered its way through the stone and started to spread all the way along there. 10 full liters of water gone in under five seconds. If you're looking for more inspiration around the home and garden, check us out on all social media handles. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm going to show you how to cut and plane down the bottom of your door if it's catching your floor. Start by finding your level. Place two tiles on the floor and put them up to the bottom of the door. Take a pencil and strike a line across the top of the second tile. Remove the door by screwing the hinges out of the frame. Now you're going to need to cut the bottom of this off. So it's safe to get two workbenches, lay your door on top, then clamp it down both ends. 
make your line a little bit more noticeable by drawing over it again, then you can cut this off using a battery operated circular saw. If you haven't got one, just a hand saw will do. Then using a small orbital sander, you can sand the cut edges to remove any splinters. Refit the door, check that it covers over your two tiles. If you're happy with that, you can start to tile your floor. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm going to show you how to install a wall mounted vanity unit, sink and taps. Start by finding the location where you're going to be putting it on the wall around your pipes. Mark up for the brackets, check that there's no pipes or wires behind the tiles before you start drilling holes in them. Then plug and screw your brackets into position, checking that they're level. Place your carcass in position and tighten this up. Then you can start to assemble the waste outlet for the plug. Once this is in position and tightened up, you can fit the bottle trap. Then you can fit the taps. Place the tap connectors through the sink. These will need connecting at the bottom with a tap wrench or a socket set. Place the sink into position, then the hot and cold water can be connected. Once this is done, seal the back of it with a line of silicone sealant. Refit your drawers and then you're complete. But if you want to see the full step-by-step -step video, visit the YouTube channel bathroom mountain. This is how you install cement boards on a wooden floor in preparation for floor tiles. Start by sweeping all the debris off the floor. Screw down any loose floorboards. Then mark across the floorboards where the beams are below. Start to cut your cement boards. Place these into position doing a dry run to start with. Cut any awkward pieces. Once you've completed that and you're happy they fit, mix up your tile adhesive. I'm using a flexible floor tile adhesive. Spread this out with a trowel and then comb it through. Place your cement board on top, a gentle tap, and then screw it down through the floorboards into the joist below. Once you've completed the area, give the joints a quick mop over and then fill them with more flexible tile adhesive, applying your scrim tape to reinforce the joints. For more videos, check out the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a floor in an old trailer. This existing floor has decayed and already fallen out, so I give it a good cleaning up by taking a four inch grinder with a sanding pad on it, grinding down all the metal work that's visible. Next, I took some measurements and cut down my 18 millimeter marine ply using a circular saw. I then applied three C's Max Bond powerful hybrid polymer adhesive across the bottom edge of the frame where the boards are going to be lying. Then I laid the sheets on top of the adhesive, pressing down with my hands. I did the same on the second sheet. Left this for about 20 minutes to dry. Now apply your Max Bond to the rear of your aluminium sheet so it bonds to the plywood. It's always best to use professional products like 3C's Max Bond for maximum strength and maximum adhesion. That's my trailer base complete. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install your own floating shelf. Use a pencil to mark the center of the bracket where the first screw is going to be. Check it with the detector to see if there's no cables or wires there. Get an envelope, stick this to the wall so it catches your dust when you're drilling with a hammer action drill and a masonry drill piece. Place a raw plug in, hammer this down to its flush. Put your first screw in. It doesn't have to be tight at this point, just so it holds the bracket then you can put your spillet level on, make sure it's level, mark the two side ends where the next screw holes are going to be. Drill these, put the plugs in, and drive your screws firmly into position so the bracket's nice and solid on the wall. Then you can apply your glue along the back of the shelf and in the holes where the bars off the bracket will meet. Slide it into position, drive the final screw in, leave to dry before loading it. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut floor tiles. Start by placing a tile directly on top, making sure it's flush with one of the tiles on the floor. Then put a second one over there, push it up to the back wall, take your marker pen and mark the tile below. Get your tile cutter, butt it tight up against the wall so it doesn't move. Slide in the tile that's been marked, making sure the marking points are at the center of the tile cutter. Put the blade on top, press down the arm and push it forward. 
Once you've done that, lift the arm and press it down. It snaps the tile into two clean cuts. Place the cut edge against the wall and the manufactured edge against the existing tile and the base clips. If you're happy that they fit, spread your adhesive, bed them into place, let them dry and grout them. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint wooden picket fencing with French heat paint using three different methods. Start off by sanding the surface of your fence using an orbital sander. Open your tin of paint, give it a good stir. My first application is using a paintbrush. And another alternative is using a small radiator roller. Pour the paint into your tray, get plenty on the roller and start to apply on the surface. Then there's paint spraying. You may need to dilute your paint by 10 to 20% until you get a nice smooth runny consistency. Pop on your PPE and then start spraying, making sure you've got dust sheets or cardboard covered in the surface below. Apply any finishing touches and you're done. If you want to see more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. This is an old kitchen base unit door. And as you can see, the hinges have been removed. So I'm going to replace it. You can see where there's already been some screw holes in there. I'm going to apply some Max Bond into the hole on both hinges. Max Bond is a powerful hybrid polymer adhesive and it will grab easily within 20 minutes. And now when I place that back into there, that adhesive will grab the underside of there you can feel the adhesive already start to grab it. Now I'm going to drive the two screws in there. And that'll be nice and solid and last for another five years. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe. Here's how you fit or replace a thermostatic shower in 60 seconds. Start by offering up the mixer bar against the existing plumbing. Put some tape around the nuts so you don't damage them when you tighten them up with your spanner. Mark in the centre where your centre bar is going to be. Place this into position and then it's going to need screwing to the tiles. So level the position of the bracket. Once you've found this, check there's no wires or pipes behind the tiles before you start drilling. Apply your plug and then start to fix the bracket into position, securing it up with a screwdriver. Place the shower bar in and then connect the bottom of your bar, again with some tape and a spanner. Then attach the two heads into position. For more bathroom ideas, like and follow. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix mirrors to a wall without any brackets. Remove the plastic backing off the rear of the mirror. Mark it into position. Apply your Max Bond right the way around all the edges and throughout the center. Place it against the wall, applying an equal amount of pressure across the whole area of the mirror. It'll instantly grab, but it's wise to put a little bit of tape at the top and bottom until it completely cures. Fixing mirrors to the wall without a bracket is simple with Max Bond. So that's how quick, easy and safe it is to fit mirrors to the wall. If you're looking for more how-to videos, just check out our YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. I'm going to show you how to install brand new fence posts when your existing ones have failed and your fence is about to fall down. Dig a hole in between each fence panel about 600 millimeters deep and 400 millimeters wide. Mix a stiff concrete four to one mix and half fill the hole. Tamper it down with the edge of your shovel. Place your post into position. Give it a gentle tap. Check that it's level. You can always secure this with a batten onto something stable like another fence post just to make sure it stays level and in position before you apply the rest of the concrete 
around the base of the post. Leave this to dry for 24 hours, then force the old fence back into position where the new post is. Hold this together with a clamp and drive some large screws through an angle bracket. You can do this at the top, middle and bottom. If you want more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm going to show you how to fit and plumb an entire toilet system. Start by installing all the components in the system. Slide the two bolts into position, fit the rubbers onto the filling and flush valve, place them into position. Then tighten the bolts over the bottom by hand. Sit the system on top of the rubber washer, sliding the two bolts into position. Apply the wing nuts below and tighten these up by hand. Attach the flexible holes to the filling inlet and tighten up with the spanner. Place the pan connector over the back of the pan. Mark up on the floor tiles where the pan's going to sit. Drill your holes and fix your brackets in position. Then run a line of clear multi-use adhesive around the base. Sit this on a couple of packs to start with. Connect the flexi hose to your 15mm mains and tighten it up with your spanners. Now drive the screws in through the toilet into the brackets to hold it into position. Remove the packs and run a clear line of silicone around the base. Install your toilet seat and then apply a line of white silicone. Like and follow Mr. and Mrs. DIY for more videos. In this 60 second tip, I'm going to show you how to seal porcelain tiles and then grout them. You can start by scraping and cleaning off any tile adhesive that may be on the surface of the tiles. Then you can add your pre-grout treatment. Pour it on, roll this across the surface of the tiles with a roller, a brush or a light handheld sprayer. Then you can mix your grout, clean cold water, add the powder and give this a good stir up. Wear a dust mask and this is the consistency you're looking for. Then you can start to spread the adhesive in between all the joints, going from left to right, making sure there's no air pockets. Then scrape it off the surface. Once this is semi-dry, you can start to buff the tiles off using a wet sponge. Do this every 15 minutes over a couple of hours. Once the grout is completely dry the following day, then you can apply the sealer on it again, covering the grout. I'm going to show you how to replace an old radiator without draining the system. Start by isolating the water. Close both valves each side of the radiator. Start to bleed the top to let some air and pressure out. Then you can loosen the bolts either side, lift the radiator off and pour the water out. Mark up where you need to fit your brackets. Drill some clearance holes. Apply the plugs. Now I'm using a special plasterboard plug and bolt. Slide the brackets into position and then screw them firmly to the wall. Double check that they're both level and then you can slowly lift your radiator and place it onto the four brackets so it takes the weight. Then connect your valves up both ends, tighten them slowly using your spanners. Close the bungs at the top and then fill them up with water. For more videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. In the videos, I showed you how to install fence posts. This video, I'm going to show you how to create close board fencing. So now your posts are set, you're going to need to install some horizontal arras rails. Clamp these into position, check that they're level using your spirit level, and then drill some pilot holes through the front of the post and drive in two 100mm screws. Now I'm applying a high strength fast curing adhesive across the face of all the arras rails. Then place your feather edge slats into position. You can hold these down using a hammer and a nail, but if you happen to have a nail gun, it'll be a bit quicker. It's just until the adhesive is dry. Every third board, check that it's level, and then continue to do this until your section is complete. And that's how you build your close board fencing. If you're looking for more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm gonna show you how to prepare and paint your garage door so it lasts. Scrub the surfaces down using some sugar soap and a good hard scrubbing brush. Then give it a light sanding down if you don't know what type of paint's been on there originally. Fill in any holes with your filler, leave that to dry and then re-sand it again. Then you can apply some finishing coat. I normally apply this over the filler, so your first coat of paint is going to dry flatter. Now the paint I'm using is from the Alfresco range and the colour is smudge. But I'm applying this on with three different methods. The first door using a large paintbrush, then the second door 
I'm using a small radiator roller. Now the next side of the door, I'm using my small handheld paint sprayer. Once it's dry, I apply the second coat using the sprayer. Now for the outside frame, I'm going to apply the paint on using a brush. Again, it's the Alfresco range, but this time the colour is blackjack. For more videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. I'm going to show you how to paint a door and frame two different colours between two rooms. Give all your woodwork a good scrub down with some sugar soap. Now apply your masking line tight up on the outside edge of the slab strip. That's right in the middle of the door frame. Then you can start to apply your paint. I'm using French Cheeks Victory Lane paint from the Alfresco range. Straight out of the tin and applying it on with French Cheeks Oval Brush. I'm cutting it in nice and tight all the way along the edge of the masking tape, feathering over it from top to bottom. Now with the door, I'm going to start by painting the six panels. Again, applying the paint on to follow the grain. Once you've completed this, do the cross members of the bar on the door and the uprights from left to right. Now I need to cut in nice and tight freehand along one edge of the door to meet the other coloured paint. Leave your paint for at least two hours to dry and then it's ready to apply a second coat. Do this in the same order as your first coat. To watch the full video and for further tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mr and Mrs DIY. I'm going to show you how to paint wooden floorboards with French Cheeks Alfresco range. Preparation is the key. Give it a light sand first, clean it with sugar soap if required. Once you've sanded it, hoover all the dust and debris up. Then you're ready to start masking up around the skating boards if you're painting the floor a different colour. Give your paint a good stir, dilute it down if you're applying it onto bare wood like me. I've diluted it just 5%, applied it with a small 4 inch radiator roller to cover an area and then feather it off with French Cheeks oval brushes. It gives her a nice smooth finish and you cover quite an area in a short space of time. Then give it a light sand and once it's dry before you start to apply your second coat. Again, same rules apply, roll the paint on with your four inch roller and feather it through with your brush. Leaving four hours drying time between coats under normal conditions. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to I'm going to show you how to adjust the temperature of your mixer shower. And take your Phillips screwdriver and unscrew one of the screws that are in there. It's not very long, usually only about 15, 20 millimeters in length. That little section will come out and it exposes this thermostatic spindle here. So what we need to do now is turn that. And we do that by placing this back on top of it. And we can adjust that now even further down to make it hotter. So now we replace this little sleeve over that position, slide our cover control back over that, tighten the screw all the way back up with the Phillips screwdriver, not too tight, and then press your side cap back into position. For the full video, visit Bathroom Mountain's YouTube channel. I'm going to show you how to clean, prepare and paint previously painted decking planks. It's vital to ensure that the surface and structure is in a suitable and dry condition. The pre-painted boards need to have a good scrubbing down with a sugar soap. Then rinsed off and dried. Check the boards to see if there's no decay or damage. Then you can use a wire wool brush to remove any flaky or loose paint. Then give them a light sanding down before you apply your paint. You can paint straight out of the can without no dilution. Leave for four hours under normal conditions before applying your second coat. It's advisable to take your shoes off for the first three weeks until it's completely cured. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm going to show you how to paint scallop effects on your walls. Start by measuring the height you want your first scallop line. Draw a straight level line around the room using a spirit level. Then apply a piece of masking tape across, wipe off the pencil line, then you can start to apply your first coat of paint. This creates a perfect line across the wall once you've removed your masking tape. Put some fresh masking tape along the back of a plate, mark up a top arrow. Place this on your line and scribe a line round with a pencil. Then if you've got any corners, you're going to need to cut out a piece of cardboard the same size as your plate. Then take your paintbrush and carefully start to cut in around your pencil scallop shapes. 
Once you've done one, you can let it dry, apply a second coat, and then even use a darker color and create an ombre effect. You can do as many scallop lines as you wish. To see the full video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm gonna show you how to prepare your stud walls with a cement board so it's ready for tiling. Use a scraper to prepare the walls and remove any old debris. Using a stud detector, you can locate the beams behind the plaster work. Mark where each position is, place your board on, then you can screw through the plasterboard into the beam behind. Mark up where any pipe work is. Cut this out and break it away. Place the boards around the pipes and screw firmly through the plasterboard into the stud. Continue this, staggering the joint, creating a brickwork effect, screwing right through into the beams. Once this is complete, you can mix up some flexible tile adhesive. Spread this in between all of the joints and then apply some scrimp tape over for reinforcement. Smooth this off and fill in around the edges. To see the full video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Tile Mountain. This is how you use a leveling system when laying floor tiles. Spread your adhesive and comb it down. Lay the tile into position. Check with the spirit level that the first tile is level. Then you can start positioning the base clips. Two along one side and then offer the second tile butt up to it. Press this down onto the adhesive. Slide the wedges through the base clip. Then using the application tool, start to squeeze the wedge through the base clip. This will bring both tiles perfectly level. Now if you slide a wedge across the edge of your tile, you can see it butts up and hits the next one until you slide it between the clip. Squeeze it together with the application tool, give it a quick tap with your rubber mallet, and then you can check the level to see if it's perfect. When you get through a number of tiles, keep checking with a long spirit level to see that they're all true. Once your adhesive is dry and you can walk on the tiles, you can then remove the clips. These will come out easy using a pair of pliers. For more 60 second tips, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Mr. and Mrs. DIY. I'm going to show you how to install your own bath. Start by screwing the leg frame to the bottom and the side of the bath and one centre support. Place the plug through the hole on the inside of the bath, then screw tight the bottle trap from the underside. Screw in the plug and press it down. Apply the overflow and tighten the bolt at the rear. Hand screw the overflow cover into position and connect the overflow into the bottle trap at the bottom of the bath. Place your taps and connect them up, then connect your flexi hoses. Screw a batten to the wall at the right level, apply a line of general purpose silicone on the batten and on the edge of the bath, lift this and place into position. Then you connect your hot water mains, then fit and silicone your two side panels into position, leaving enough space at the side for the tiles more how-to videos, don't forget to like and subscribe.